Right before we jump into this video, if you want to get my free 11 days to better photography mini video course, head on over to fronosphoto.com 11 days to get started right now. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com, and I want to help you understand the different types of memory cards that are on the market right now, as well as which ones might be the right ones for you, as well as some tips and tricks for making sure that you don't lose your important information that you captured. So let's start right here. We have the micro SD card. You'll find this type of card in a camera phone. You'll find it in smaller cameras. You'll also find it in drones. Now remember, it's super small, so if you drop it, you might lose it, so you want to be careful there. Now one of the more universal cards that you'll find out there in a lot of cameras is what's called the SD card. There's so many different options for SD cards. We're going to talk about that coming up when we talk about read write speeds. But this is the SD card. Moving on we have the compact flash card. That was the mainstay card back in the past. When you looked back maybe a decade or so that was the card that most people used. That's starting to become obsolete. You won't find that in a lot of cameras that you're picking up in today's market. Now some of the newer cards, you have an XQD card that Nikon is using and Sony also uses it in some of its cameras. And then a super fast card uh, called the CFast card, you will find that in the higher end video type cameras because they are super fast, they're also a little more expensive. So those are the types of cards, now let's talk about the different speeds of cards. You don't want to cheap out and buy the most inexpensive cards. Why don't you want to do that? Because you spent all of this money on good glass and good cameras only to cheap out on the card and then get a card error or have something go wrong with the card because it stops working. You don't want to have that happen. Don't cheap out when it comes to buying memory cards. Pick them up from reputable companies that are out there and you will have less issues when you're capturing images. Now read write speed, what does this mean? It's the speed at which which the camera will write the data to the card as well as the speed that the card will transfer through a card reader to your computer. So there's a lot of different speeds out there. Let's take SD for example. You have things like UHS-1 and UHS-2 which are some of the newer faster cards and then you'll hear things like class 3 and class 4 and 6 and 10. The faster the class, the better transfer rates you're going to find. So when you have a 4K capable camera, you're going to need to use a faster card opposed to a slower one because maybe your camera won't allow you to save 4K footage if your card's write speed is super slow. So keep in mind, the faster the cards, the better off you're going to be writing data to it as well as saving time when you transfer it using card readers to your computer. So let's talk about how you transfer your memory cards to your computer. This is pretty simple. You could connect your camera to the computer. I personally don't recommend that as a way to do transfers. I like to use different card readers. For example, we have an SD card that takes a micro SD card that lets you transfer that to your computer. You have just a micro SD card, USB 3.0 card reader, as well as an SD card reader that's 3.0. Speaking of speeds, you don't want to cheap out again and buy an older card card reader, something that's maybe 2.0, USB 2.0, because that's much slower and won't take advantage of the read speeds of those better cards. Also some computers you have may have multiple card readers built in. My MacBook Pro right here has an SD card built into it, but some of the other computers have compact flash and micro SD and SD and all the different ones that you could take. Or we have something like this which is called a smart hub. This is what I personally use to transfer my data. I have different modules right here that will take different types of memory cards and allow me to make that transfer fast and seamless to my computers. So that's pretty much it for how you transfer data from the memory cards to the computer. Keep in mind, the faster the read speed, the quicker you're going to be able to get the data off the card to your computer. So if you're shooting 128 gigs of data and you have a super slow transfer speed, you're going to be wasting a lot of time. Now speaking of wasting time, if your camera offers you the ability to shoot with multiple cards, I recommend you put two cards in the camera so you get what's called redundant shooting. So if something happens to one card, you still at least have the backup. There's less of a chance that both cards are not going to work when you are shooting. So that's called redundant shooting. That's what I do with all of my cameras that allow me to use 
to memory cards. And finally, have extra memory cards in your bag at all time. They're inexpensive for the most part. Don't cheap out and only buy one and only use one. If that gets filled up, you don't want to start deleting pictures off the camera because you might run into some issues there with deleting the wrong photo that you didn't want to delete. So that's pretty much it. Don't cheap out. Buy the faster cards that you can buy. Make sure when you're buying a card, you're getting the right speed for the type of data and the type of camera that you have. That's pretty much it. That's helping you understand the differences between the memory cards that are out on the market right now. Now, if you're looking to understand how to capture great images quicker and more efficiently, I have a guide just for you. It's called the Fronos Photo Guide to Getting Out of Auto. You can get it at fronosphoto.com guide. And over there right now, you can get a free preview to see if it's for you. So thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya. Subscribe now. Watch this, watch this video.